Hi, I'm Marvin, and welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. And in this Workflow Wednesday, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a surgical guide on the Real Guide treatment plan software. So right now we have Real Guide open. This is actually the case that we worked on on the last video, which is uh, going over just a simple implant planning case, kind of showing you the steps of the actual treatment plan software, all the tools and everything that it possesses. So right now we're actually here, we have our treatment plan done. Um, and for us again, a lot of times when we do treatment plans, we go ahead and get them approved by the doctor before a fabrication of the guide is even made. So for this case, uh, it has been approved and now we're gonna move forward to the next phase of it, which is actually creating the surgical guide. So right here again, we've gone through all the steps here on the left side. I've shown what uh, happens when uh, we're on reports, kind of showing, like letting you go uh, know and go over the actual different reports that you can make with this software. And then of course the exporting that I'll even show you guys once we're done making the guide itself. And of course, object lists. Segmentation is gonna be if you're gonna actually segment the bone and turn the bone into an STL object that you can, for example, cut, for example, if you're doing like a bone reduction, or even for example, some doctors may want the bone printed out and they can even use it for like a mock-up surgery um, by hand, you know, at their office. Um, so that's something else you may use the segmentation for. But for us, we're actually gonna go straight down to guide design. And of course, guide design, that step is exactly what it's labeled. It is just the making of the guide itself. So here we're actually in our phase where we're gonna create the blockouts for the uh, actual model we're gonna be using. On the left side, you'll see that we have the model we want chosen, and we only have one scan brought in. But if you have multiple scans brought into this case, or you've duplicated this, or you've just maybe done and made a model or anything like that, every time you create a new object, it will be added to your object list, which will also be added to this list right here on the top left. If I select, you'll see I only have one. But if there was multiple ones, you can choose through those, to, and that's the one that you'll be working on and building the guide on. So it's always uh, uh, important to make sure that you have the right one selected so that when you're actually doing this and you're going through the steps, you're using the correct model and the correct scan to go ahead and move forward. So for us, we do have that one chosen. All these, um, <clears throat> excuse me, all these uh, offsets and different, um, parameters that are here I keep them all the same the software has a, a really good nothing we don't really need a surface ops offset we don't need any side angles um, the minimal undercuts we don't really need in them to have like you know too much of that and then of course smooth diameter that's the only one that has any um, you know type of number that's there that's even altered which is 0 0.40 so that's totally fine to keep and repair mesh filter or filler, I apologize, and that one's at zero. So you don't need to change any of that. I never do, I keep it exactly how it is. And here what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the undercut. So I'm just gonna get it at the view that I want just like that, and then right here where it says set insert direction from view, I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And now after doing that, I'm going to generate the undercut. And now that you see here, I've generated an undercut model that has filled in all those undercuts so there's not any problems when the doctor is actually placing the surgical guide at time of surgery. Once that's gone ahead and that's done, if you want to delete the undercut and make a new one, you can go ahead and do that. But for us, we're gonna go off to the next step. And here is actually where we're creating the guide itself. So there's different ways you can do it. You could do it, which is called spline, which is like drawing a line brush or lasso. I keep it on spline because that's what I like to use. Just making sure it is called spline. It kind of felt weird when I was saying it that way, but it is spline. So what we're going to do is now we're going to go ahead and you're just going to left click and start that line just like that. And as you keep going, you'll see that it creates this line that is pretty much just a representation of how you want this guide to sit. So if you want it to be like a quadrant guide, you can go ahead and bring it back up here. If you want it to be a full guide all the way around the mouth, you can go ahead and extend it that far. But we're just gonna go ahead and go right here. We're not gonna make it a full mouth guide. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of make it a half arch. Go around, back to where we started. And then when you have those last dots just like this, just bring it over and it will connect itself just like that. If you wanna alter the lines, you can by grabbing one of these dots and bringing them down. If you feel you wanna add a dot anywhere to actually alter maybe like for example, this one right here in the middle, you can add that, another one there if you wanna do that. And again, I'm doing all this just by left clicking on the mouse. 
But other than that, this looks perfect. So once you've gone ahead and you've, you've drawn your representation of the guide where you want it to sit, you can go ahead and choose create guide right here. Again, just before we go with that, just so you see all these parameters that are set, I don't change. But again, if you wanted to change the thickness, occlusal thickness, pin sleeve support, support angle, all those things you can. But I keep it uh, set, set <clears throat> excuse me, I keep it set at the exact same because everything they pretty much have here is perfect. Um, it doesn't make them too thin. It doesn't make them too bulky. There's still a lot of support and strength for these. So we're going to go ahead and just choose create guide. And it should take nothing but about 10 seconds for this guide to be made, maybe even less. So what you're gonna go ahead and just wait for it to do that. And as you see here, here's our guide made. Just like that. If you see, actually, so I will get rid of this object that we have here, which is our undercut. And as you see here, there's kind of this material that gets made right here. So if you wanna get rid of that right here, you have what's called the freeform tools. This is where you can actually smooth remove or add any material to whatever object you want. So for example, I'll press smooth, come over here and this green dot is just, again, a representation of what area I'm going to be you know, smoothing out. And I just want to smooth that little extra material away just like that. Not making too much of a difference, not touching the inside, but just smoothing that out just like that. Don't go too crazy. You don't want to alter how this guide is going to sit or anything like that. But if you have any excess material like that there, you can go ahead and just smooth it out real fast. And now we're going to go and we're going to actually go to our advanced options here at the bottom. And we have three different options. We have a sculpt tool, round window and text options. So for example, round window, something very good. A lot of doctors are going to want windows on their surgical guides to actually have like a viewing point to make sure that this guide is sitting correctly. So if you go ahead and go to round window, you'll see parameters will drop down with window depth and window size. So for example, this is just the window. So if I left click, you'll see it creates a window just like that, but that is a little too small. So we're going to go ahead and up the window size. And now, for example, if I come over, and now left click, I created a window just like that. And that's not too bad of one. If you wanted to get rid of that material, you would just have to, of course, uh, go to depth, make it a little longer or anything like that. Um, or not depth, I apologize, window size. And you would just bring it up and you can have it a little wider. So you can go ahead and get rid of that material. But that's actually a very good window. That won't cause any problems with that extra material still there. And it still keeps the strength in the guide itself. So that's actually a very good window that the doctor could use to just make sure they can view it and see that the guide is sitting down properly on the patient's teeth. Sculpting tools at all if you want. You can go ahead and do that and you can actually cut away. So you can actually make a window yourself by just sculpt. Um, but I don't really, I don't really personally use that one. I use the round window. Again, this one came out perfectly. I think those always work out really good. And then of course, text options. So if you want to put the patient's name on the guide, you can go ahead and do that. If for example, at our laboratory, we have uh, different pan numbers that correspond to different cases, we can go ahead and put the number so that when we do a big print um, and we need to find where certain guides or models or things like that need to go, they do have that corresponding number on them. It just makes it easier for us. Um, but we'll go ahead and do that. And of course you can have here, when you add the text, um, you can remove the text, you can add another. So you can put a name and then put a number if you would like, put the name multiple times, put the patient's name and the doctor's name, whatever really works for you. And then of course you have the size of the, of the letters itself, the depth and the spacing, and then whether or not you wanna engrave it, or if you kinda want the words to stick out and you can kinda feel them a little bit, or if they're just carved into it itself. So um, just like that, so that's where you would generate the 3D text. But again, I like them engraved, so we'll go ahead and keep it just like that. And you'll go ahead to next step. And as you see here, as I make this window bigger, looking at our object list, because we made, um, of course, a surgical guide and an undercut, now you see we have a face scan, which is what we started with, surgical guide and undercut model, and even where it says my name, which is just the words that are on the guide itself. So you can actually get rid of it and you can actually see how the name itself is carved into the guide, just like that. So now that you've gone ahead and you've created your guide, as you can see, now the hole has been created. So let's get rid of some of the CT scan and some of the other objects that are here, 
to kind of show you. So right now, as you see, there's a representation of the digital sleeve itself kind of showing. And um, of course, if you even got rid of, if you go to implants, you can actually get rid of the even, even the implant. And you can see how it carves out the space for the sleeve itself. And so whatever sleeve you're using, it will be able to fit perfectly inside of this surgical guide once it's printed out or milled out um, for placement of that sleeve. So of course, going back to um, the different steps we have here, um, not going in too much detail because these are kind of free, free handed uh, tools that you can use to kind of alter things. But you even have this one called Sandbox. And what I would call this is almost, the best way I can kind of explain it is kind of like a STL object uh, manipulation app. Um, kind of like one like Mesh Mixer is one of them that is very known that you can actually come in here and you can start adding different things. Um, you can add custom bars, you can edit the object, you can add, um, uh, you know, spacers, you can add um, even more text, you can carve the object, you can add connectors, you can add um, support bars, so on and so forth. So that's something really good to know that you have because if for any reason, let's say you wanna cut this, make it shorter, um, you want to you wanna add you know, even more text to it or whatever it may be. You can do that here in Sandbox. Um, I won't go too much in depth about that, but it is just a good thing to know that you have there. Um, and like I said, there's a lot that goes into it and a lot of things that you can do. So it is really good to know that you have that. But once your guide is made after your treatment plan, realistically, the last step you're going to have is right here in reports slash export. That's gonna be how we extract the actual guide itself and take it to either your milling process or your printing process. So here, as you see, like we talked about earlier, we have export and in parentheses 43 tokens. So every time you export something at least one time from a specific case, it's gonna charge you one token. So for example, let's say I made three different guides. Maybe the doctor was planning for number 30 and number 18. And you know, let's say, so instead of, sorry, three guides, uh, two guides, so number 30 and number 18. If the doctor wants one guide just for 30 and another guide just for 18, not a full arch guide like that, that includes both, when you export one, let's say you do 30 first and then you do 18, it won't charge you for two tokens, it will only charge you for one, because you're specifically only, oh, it's only taking one token from that specific case, it's not gonna take a token for every time that you export something. So even if, for example, if we go back to Sandbox, we even have the option of creating models here, or even under guide design, it says create model. You can go ahead and do that. You can create a model and you can make it a certain way. Then come to Sandbox, you can change it. And let's say you cut that model in half. So you sent a full arch model and a half arch. Again, every time you export it, that token here will only change one time, specifically per case. So if we go back to administration, we start a new patient and then we export again five different files. It's really only going to take one because it's one new export from one new file. So that's very good to know. So don't feel, um, you know, like intimidated or anything going, oh, well, I have five different things I have to export. I'm going to use up five of my tokens. No, you're only going to use up one token per case. So that's very good to know. So if you feel like you need to alter things, if you feel like you want to make multiple guides to even test some things. Maybe you're testing out your printer. Maybe you're testing out um, how well certain models come out depending on size and depending on length or whatever it may be. That's something you can do on here because the more you keep editing things on one file, it will only take one token. So when you're actually exporting these things, you'll see there's different options. Export anatomy, export guide and model, export guide for milling, export cam data or export all. So of course, if you export all, you're not only gonna just export the guide, you're gonna export the undercut model, you're gonna actually export uh, the name, the text that you put on, you're gonna export the face scan, even the implant and so on and so forth. So if you just want everything, you can always do that and go ahead and send it that way. Um, but if all you want is the guide, um, even if you have guide and model, I usually do that just so I know for sure I can even get the scan I want to. Um, because when you do that, if you bring those together again in like a mesh mixer, for example, they're all in orientation because you just exported them from the same software that they have been aligned to and everything like that. So again, you would just export guide and you would take it to the folder that you have 
and you can go ahead and do that. And kind of something that I had touched on a little bit in the last video that I'll show you now is right here where it says drill report. As you see, when I press that, it'll take me online, but it will prompt this download of a PDF. And when I open that PDF, as you see here, it gives you the drill sequence for this exact surgical kit that I planned out. So again, this is something very important to know that you actually do receive from the software because a lot of doctors or a lot of colleagues of yours that you may be working with that are going to do this uh, uh, surgery actually want this information. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see that not only does it give you, of course, the information that we planned with the four uh, a four millimeter diameter implant, a 10 millimeter di uh, length diameter, um, uh, but um, uh, sorry, not diameter, just length, um, but and also the sleeve that we chose, but as you see here, the drill sequence. So this is something that really assists the doctors at time of surgery, that again, not a lot of treatment plan softwares will even give you this information, but from what I've used with Real Guide and I've used multiple implants, they have the information for all of them. So it'll prompt this um, PDF for you. It'll download it right away to your computer. And now that's something that you can actually send your doctors um, for the actual treatment plan or for the actual surgery uh, part of the case itself. So that's something really good to know that you have um, just to make sure that you give that information to your doctor. But that's it for another Workflow Wednesdays. If you guys have any questions, please comment below and we'll see you in the next one.